This is Tommy from Carrera Castings. Today in Best Practices, we're featuring CAD file maintenance. In today's episode, we're transferring your files to the Solidscape machine. We have gone as far as creating our STL file and checking it. Now we are going to transfer it via 3ZWorks to our Solidscape machine. First, we are going to open 3ZWorks. 3ZWorks is the program that takes our SDL and converts it to machine language so the Solidscape machine understands what to do. First you have to do is open a file. We're going to pick file B that we created in our last episode. You'll notice it comes in standing up. This is not the position we want our part to be in. Keep in mind that in 3Z Works, the blade that cuts the parts every time a layer is built is on this section, right here. So the blade is here and comes over in this direction and cuts the part every time a layer is built. So we need to position our part in such a way that it is better for it to be stronger and also that the blade has a chance to cut it nice and even. First thing we do is we auto arrange it. I have it set up as uh, object spacing in X is 8 millimeters, object spacing in Y is 8 millimeters, and the platform offset on X is 15, and the platform off offset Y is 15 millimeters. Now, you can reduce these numbers if you have multiple parts, but keep in mind, you do not want them too close together. I have found that under 6 millimeters in the X and Y and the object spacing is minimal because if you ever bring in a bad STL, the whole group will be affected and your whole build will go bad. So let's do it. So now we have our order arranged and we say, okay. Now we don't want it standing up. The higher the piece, the longer it's going to take. So we want to lay it down. So we're gonna rotate it on an X, Y, Z axis. A pop-up comes up. So basically on the Z, I'm gonna say 90 degrees and it turns it to face this way. Now we want to drop it on the Y. You will notice here your vectors. This is Y, this is X, and Z obviously is up and down. So now we are going to the Y and we're going to do negative 90. And this is important. We want the front of this to be facing the cutter. If you had prongs for a center stone on this ring, you want those prongs facing the cutter. So once this is done, we are going to auto arrange once more, and this part is ready to be sliced. We're going to go to our fill. We're gonna select our configuration, which for us is 0 0.0381. We're gonna give it some extra cooling time. Here's what's happening in a Southscape machine. It's coming out hot. So you need time for this part to cool down. So when the blade goes over it, it cuts a nice fine hard piece, not something that's soft because it'll smear it. So you're gonna give it extra cooling time, 35 is fine, depending on the room that you're in. If the room is a little hot, I would increase that time. Try to keep your solidscape rooms as cool as possible and an environment that is controlled. So we say, okay, now in the extra platform cooling, we're also going to put 35. Now the number of platform supports it's asking for is how many support material layers are we going to put before the actual part is being built? I like to put four. Too much and it gets a little smeary, too little and it's too close to the platform. So four seems for me to be what has always worked. We're going to say okay. It tells us how many slices there are. In this case, it's rounded it to 333 layers. We're gonna say okay, and we're gonna wait until it slices it up. And you're gonna notice down here on the 3Z works that it gives you an estimated time, which in this case is 11.22 hours, plus or minus 1.12 hours. We're gonna say okay. And what happens is I have it that it automatically pops up a checker. In other words, we can go through each one of these layers to make sure nothing has gone wrong because here is where you're going to find out if you left a naked edge or a dirty file because then you're going to see things go really wrong as you're going through these layers. 
So we're going to speed it up a little bit. And you're going to notice how beautiful these layers are coming. There's no spikes, there's no dirt, there's no nothing. In summary, we covered positioning your parts for an optimum build. Your prong should face the cutter. Spacing between parts is important in case you bring in a bad file. And cooling is necessary for a clean cut. Hope you enjoyed this segment and stay with us. There are more best practice videos in CAD and 3D printing for jewelry manufacturing to come.